you're doing, man. It's awesome. Good morning, good morning, guys. Yes, that's right. Back with another Fairmont update. I went to Lund Racing for two days because they had a whole bunch of stuff that I needed to pick up. Last time we checked in, <clears throat> we did the rack, we did the spacers. So now it's time to start fitting the transmission in and a lot of you that really pay attention to the chats and all know exactly what transmission I'm gonna go ahead and go with. So I went to Lund Racing and decided to raid their parts bin and they have senior is an avid collector of just hot rod parts so not only did i need front skinnies well he just happened to have a big collection of front skinnies and i had my pick so i went with the bogart x plasti dipped um these are yes believe it or not these are plasti dipped so this should come off pretty easy but these are bogarts the reason i went with the bogarts is because i have bogarts now people are like why would you go with the bogart these are 15 by 10 um, I think they have a seven and a half inch backspacing with a 275 tire. I think it'll tuck in nicely back there. The reason I'm not going to go with these S197 uh, backspaced S71s is because I don't like them. I don't like how they look. I just think they're ugly. So I'll probably be selling this, but I'd like to know what can fit back there. So the fact that I can fit a good sized tire back there makes me happy. So I do have a matching set of Bogarts. Bogarts. But he also had some Bellac S197 rears. And I was like, well, that's the exact backspace and bolt pattern I need for the Fairmont because it's a 94-95 uh, differential width on a Fox body and I need a little bit more backspace. So this is a seven and a half inch backspace wheel from Bellac. And I was like, yeah, I'll take that too because um, I can use it. Hold on, let me go on this side. <clears throat> I can use it on... I have two S197 cars and a Fox body, so why not have a wheel that I can use on all three vehicles? So, went ahead and picked up the wheels also. Transmission. Let me take this crate out, let me do a little work, and I'll show you what transmission is in here. A lot of you that watch the channel know exactly what's in here. I just wanted to take a, a quick video in case you wanted to know how the hell I got that crate out of there. So, don't look at it too closely. The, the rigging Union of America would probably make fun of me, but it's out. So again, this is what was in the GT500. Had a trans cooler, shifter from P Precision Performance Products. Never heard of it, never heard of it. So whatever, it worked fine. I wasn't gonna switch it up just because. Cohen converter, probably a four to $5,000 billet, bolt together converter, badass. No reason I should change it and I put a um, mechanical diode in it so it should transfer some good power. The cross member for an S197 probably won't get used. The SFI. Uh, flex plate and the reed case 400 this is a billy badass transmission now the reason i got it back is because the luns weren't able to use it because of their turbo setup and what they want to do in, in the future they're gonna have to put dump valves different gear ratios all that stuff the current gear ratio is a 1 8 1 3 then a 1 0 um it, they wanted like a 1 5 1 3 1 0 or 1 5 1 2 or something like that so this will work for me a 1 8 uh, with 373s, just like the GT500, the 13 second and 11 should be fine again. Reed case, um, you know, all billet internals. This is a badass trans. I will not need anything ever again because this guy propelled the uh, GT500 to go 8.1. So I can't imagine taking five or 600 pounds off, making about a thousand rear wheel with a coyote. I can't imagine this thing can't be propelled to a high seven. Okay, now I gotta bring the car down because I have to take the ramps and widen them to the outer parts of the subframe connector so that I can slide the 400 in with the Stifler's trans mount, see what I can do to mount it, and then slide the motor in with the mid plate installed. It's gonna be a hell of a process, but I'm gonna try to capture as much as I can, but I gotta get to work so I can't be here filming all of the steps. That was not fun at all. Um, but at least the engine seems to be in an orientation that sort of makes sense. 
and the Turbo 400 is attached and I have room. So what I have to work on is the cross member because the cross member does not work currently. But I think it's kind of wedged between the oil pan, mid plate, everything is, believe it or not, kind of held up nicely. Like, it's weird, but okay, I'll, I'll figure out what's holding it up. But I'm obviously going to clearance everything so it's not hitting the oil pan. The mid plate is bolted. And then eventually I'll have to make brackets and tack it into place, center it properly. But I'm not going to get too crazy right now. That was a lot of work, guys, for the amount of tools that I have. Um, I don't know how I made it happen, but it went in. It went in one shot, trans and motor, angled in, about 15 slings and ratcheting and uh, made it in there. Okay, so <clears throat> a little update on the 13 GT. Um, you guys know this car. Bought it to, you know, give the common man some kind of uh, representation on the channel. P-Mass, E85, LU47, 18 manifold, easy stuff. We've been on a catch can kick on this car. We've been talking a lot about catch can setups and ventilating the crank case, especially on boosted setups, because man, the amount of rainland failures I've seen on very low boost applications is mind blowing to me. So you can't just shove a catch can on the existing situation here, okay? You can't just shove a catch can on this. And I'm going to explain why putting a catch can using the factory um, PCV stuff is not ideal. Okay, so just in case they decide to give the kit some kind of sponsorship. This is the factory, or these are the factory fittings that are on these Mustangs. This one is on the passenger side. This one is on the driver's side. So... If you go ahead and install catch can lines directly onto the factory fittings, there is a check valve here. And look at how much of a restriction it is. I can't even see through it. Let me get it in the sun. Like there is, this thing is only flowing if the check valve is going the right way. So unless you pull off this check valve or drill this out or remove it in such a way that it mimics the driver's side. See, the driver's side is wide open. Ta-da, no problem, easy peasy. But this guy, you're restricting the flow. So what you should do is pick yourself up a set of fittings that are straight through. These are from UPR. I'll post the part number up top so you guys can see it. And it has a similar fitment to factory, but it allows you to put in, I believe this is dash 10 line. Let me make sure that the line is the right size. Yes, sir. This was on my GT500. For those of you who are longtime followers, you'll notice that this is the same catch can that was on my GT500. What I did was I got a press on deal here with dash 10 line. Now, the, I wish I had 90 degree versions of the UPR one and I'm sure they have them on the site, but it didn't really look all that hard because this is not gonna be the permanent setup for this vehicle. This is more like a proof of concept. So you take the UPR fittings that go in the factory cam cover, then you have a dash 10 and then you take both sides and plumb it to a vented open style catch can with a drain. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy. And what I'll do is I'll drive it for a couple of months and just to see, you know, proof of concept with E85, how much fluid collects in here. And I know that I'm venting everything to atmosphere, even though this car is not boosted, it's more of a um, proof of concept application. Okay, a very temporary setup. Okay, all right, catch can is down there. All right, down there, plugged the cold air. So turn it on and you'll see if it huffs and puffs a little bit from there. Uh, it will. And um, just kind of showing you guys, in my opinion, an option to ventilate all the crankcase pressure by not using the factory PCV valve that's on the passenger side. All right, there you go. So if you want to delete this guy, when you install catch cans, it's a good idea, or you can somehow get rid of that valve and reuse the factory fitting on the passenger side. The driver's side on Gen 1s seems to be wide open, so you might be able to use that, no problem. But in my opinion, it's really important and crucial to get rid of all of the crankcase pressure that you can so that you don't have any ringland issues in the future. I've seen ringland issues happen even at low boost because look, the ring gap on these cars are set by some machine chunk a chunk in out motors um, you know, at a factory somewhere, it's not hand-built, 
and you know spec'd out for boost specifically so there you go ventilate your crankcase pressure get some upr fittings or drill this guy out and you should have uh, a better chance of saving your ring lands than not all right guys that's it for me thanks for listening talk to you later